Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone, live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, joined by co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Jamie Thomas, general manager, software-defined systems and storage for IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. Uh, thank you, it's great, good to be here. Great to see you, you're smiling, you're <laughs> talking to customers, it's your show. Um, lots changed in the past year at IBM. So tell the folks out there, uh, Quickly, what's changed and why is IBM different this year than last year? Well, I think we've arrived here with a, a perspective of what, it, what, what does infrastructure really mean to our clients on this new journey that they're embarked on. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, this, the new initiatives in the marketplace, particularly around cloud, analytics, mobile, and social. And really, what does that mean to clients, particularly in, from a storage perspective? It creates this opportunity for all of our stakeholders and the various accounts to deal with this new data explosion. And I think that presents uh, new opportunities for them, uh, new challenges. And so a lot of what we've been talking about this week is how do we enable our clients to tackle those challenges? We talked to Sebastian earlier and result, which, you know, pontificate, oh, we were right last year predicting all this stuff, but the, the pace of change has been massive. We talked about the yeah. portfolio refresh. Uh, pretty significant, the yes. speed of yes. what's happened. So, yes. and obviously now you're in, in command, that's a new change. Yes. Um, he wouldn't put his finger on it, but was there a flashpoint uh, internally within IBM, was it years ago? He said five years organically they decided storage, but where, how did all this come together? Was it like, was it just a continuous rallying cry or was it more of continuous innovation? Well, I think there was a combination of things that led to the announcements this week. Clearly, the announcements we, we made are really a, a combination of innovations that we've invested in over a, a number of years, both from IBM Research and in our laboratories. Uh, we also uh, fundamentally needed to address, we believe, this new generation, next generation of applications and workload that fundamentally are changing infrastructure needs. And it's requiring organizations to have much more intelligent infrastructure. So I believe the announcements we made this week are, are really founded on those two different premises. What do clients need to uh, drive uh, benefits from their existing storage environments, which requires a lot of this innovation, and what do they need to do to capture this next generation of opportunity? Intelligence, obviously, great. We saw the announcement today with Watson, uh, bought an AI company, uh, the brains of, of, yeah. of systems. And you talk about, this is a trend where you're starting to see reasoning mm -hmm. kind of come into the mm -hmm. equation, and mm -hmm. that's my word, but AI yeah. kind of implies, yeah. you know, computers doing yeah. some thinking, obviously, cognitive computing was a, th mm -hmm. was a, was a theme. Now, translating that down into storage and systems, it's a software-driven world. Yes. Uh, um, as the person in charge, how do you take that and rally the troops? What's the message that you do internally and then how does that translate to the customer? Well, this week we, we spoke about three main tenets from a storage strategy. We spoke about software-defined storage. We spoke about uh, optimization and performance uh, through flash innovation across the product line. And we talked about the infusion of next generation virtualization into uh, environments to allow clients to optimize their existing storage environments. When we look at software-defined storage, what we really b believe that brings to a lot of our clients is a, a, the, a unique ability to automate their infrastructure perhaps differently than what they've done in the past. So it brings the ability to better manage the infrastructure, to better apply policy and, and data governance. Uh, it allows us to more intelligently tier storage to the most effective uh, media and not only um, achieve the needs of, of, of new workloads, but also tap into the, uh, the back office uh, expertise, if you will, that we can get through things like flash, through disk integration, and through uh, tape integration. So it really opens up a lot of opportunities for our clients. So Jamie, you're a software person by background. You, you know, software development, middleware, you really know that business well. Now you're coming into a, a division that the world sees, anyway, as hardware group. Um, I guess the first question is, is that a sort of misnomer? Uh, is, is software sort of eating the world, as Mark Andreessen would say? And what does your software 
uh, background allow you to do with the storage division that somebody maybe without that background might not be able to, to do? Yeah, well, I, I think first of all, we, we see our, ourselves as a provider of solutions for our clients. And even within, quote, the hardware division, clearly many of our offerings uh, don't operate with, without software. Just as Tom Rosamilia said uh, yesterday, software does need hardware to run somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's really about optimizing the combination of software and hardware to the benefit of the clients is, is my perspective. And that's something we've been doing for a long time. Uh, if I look at, at my experiences that I had with WebSphere in the early days, uh, the, the real secret there to uh, success with the optimization of the middleware uh, and tying that more intelligently to the hardware layers in which we, we believe we f effectively did with both power and the mainframe in those days. Um, so in the storage arena though, I think what software allows us to do, allows us to have more agility. It allows us to have, um, to meet client needs in some of these much more dynamic environments where the, client, where the requirements are evolving much more quickly. It allows us to do that effectively. And it, it then gives uh, clients a choice. So you can buy certain solutions as a software form factor. You can choose to buy them as an appliance form factor. And frankly, as we give clients a choice about building out on our cloud infrastructure on software, it gives us flexibility in being able to run those assets out there in different pricing schemes on top of software. So let's unpack your, your three pillars here a little bit. Let's start with software defined. Yeah. You announced yeah. uh, elastic storage. Yeah. There's a, a lot of components that people are, are talking about. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about the software defined um, products. What can I buy today? What is, what is in there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, as part of our software defined strategy, we announced two main offerings. One is our new offering, codename Elastic Storage. And that is really focused on these next generation workloads, predominantly driven by unstructured data sets and analytics, the need to apply analytics to that unstructured data. Um, I can talk a little bit more about Elastic Storage in a minute. The other key offering that we announced as part of our software defined portfolio is our um, storage virtualization capability, which is, has been around for a while and we updated in a major way at this conference, allows our clients to virtualize a very large set of IBM and non-IBM hardware, over 260 different uh, footprints, if you will, um, and that is a, a software form factor that we've had a, available in that environment for a while. From a, an elastic storage perspective, this is an offering and capability we've invested in over many years. And it was originally the technology, the storage layer that powered Watson and other supercomputers. And now what we've seen in this shift that's occurred in the last year and a half, as more of our clients uh, are assimilating uh, unstructured data, particularly around uh, social mobile context because they're trying to personalize experience in different ways, or they're trying to use this data for things like risk analysis or fraud analytics or other uh, industry relevant problems, uh, they, they need a different way uh, of, of deploying the infrastructure. And, and this, this capability allows them to achieve both flexibility and economics around those deployments. So the strategy is to bring those pieces into the storage solution, yeah. make it a fundamental part of it. Now, I have a question on the, the next generation virtualization. So what is next gen about what you guys announced? Is it just bigger, faster, better, or is there some other secret sauce in there? Well, I think the, the, the main uh, innovation that was, we announced within the, the virtualization capability is our real-time compression. And this uh, innovation around real-time compression allows our clients to store five times the data with the same storage footprint that they already had deployed. So we think this really helps our clients. Uh, and we're really trying to help uh, clients understand more intently when they use this kind of uh, virtualization capability, they're able to achieve better uh, parameters around continuous availability and mobility of their data gives them a lot of flexibility about how they manage their hardware, how they do maintenance of that hardware, how they upgrade it. And a lot of the software-defined agenda to me is about flexibility. It's about flexibility of how you use your hardware and uh, how you manage it, ultimately. And of course, the other big disruption is Flash. Yes. Um, you guys yeah. made a you know, big announcement. Uh, let's see, last, was it last year, last April, Steve Mills announced a billion dollar investment. He likes billion dollar <laughs> investments, a good number, nice round number. Um, <laughs> So talk about what's going on in, in Flash and, and what's new there. From a, from a Flash announcement, you're right. We did, we did also share this week that we've, we've shipped over 2,000 uh, Flash systems, as well as we've, uh, we've shipped now over 100 petabytes of uh, Flash-related uh, storage. 
Um, the other thing is we announced that we've, influ we've, we've infused our DS8000 product line, our high-end product line, with flash enclosures. And that gives our clients in that space some improved economics. Uh, 3.5 times performance improvements, 50% uh, space improvement, and uh, energy con conservation as well. So it's just uh, another step along the journey of infusing flash into the larger product line. And in Boston last week, um, you guys had an event, it was great, yes. and, and it was good, because you had you talked about the products, but you also gave a little direction, and you had some guys come in from Haifa, from the labs. They talked about things like storelets, and sort of new object stores, and so some of that is directional, right? A lot yes. of that is directional. Yeah. Maybe talk about that direction. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I'm Bush going all along last year. He sort of set the record straight. He says, I didn't say I didn't like object. I think it's the future. But so, what about object in, in, in terms of the direction? So, what we really are doing with object is we're we, we plan to um, improve our integration with OpenStack Swift. We've already done quite a bit of testing on that front with our Elastic Storage offering. Uh, through the integration of OpenStack Swift and Elastic Storage, we can achieve object support. Uh, really. Uh, that, that just has to be a maturity of testing and then putting the fit and finish on that particular scenario. Here at the uh, Expo, we're demonstrating the use of uh, OpenStack Swift with Elastic Storage and using our enterprise content management solution as just a workload example of how you could make, take advantage of, of the storage layer. So if I could summarize the strategy. So you, you've got you know, your software-defined storage products and vision and solutions. You've got the flash capability. You've got the underlying virtualization capability, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. fundamental to any mm -hmm. software-defined. You have yes. to virtualize the yeah. underlying hardware. And you're allowing the existing product suite, the portfolio, to play mm -hmm. so that your yes. customers' data exactly. services, don't, they don't have to rip them out. Um, that's different, clearly, from some startup who says, hey, I'm new and I'm just going to go software defined and don't have to worry about the old stuff, we're just worried about the new stuff. You don't have that, that luxury or it's two-edged sword, right? But how are you different than, say, some of the other um, large, the, the storage cartel, I often, I often <laughs> call it, uh, some of the large suppliers? So some of them are doing the same thing. What's different about IBM? Well, we do believe that there's a, a, a different approach to software defined storage. In the uh, next generation space where Elastic Storage plays, we're really focused on a, uh, a software agnostic uh, offering uh, that can be that can run on multiple types of hardware. It runs on x86 today, it runs on power. Um, we believe that, uh, that this software layer also can be effectively integrated with these other storage mechanisms, and we already have that in place today. So as you said, the integration with tape and flash and things like that, that is there today. We believe that that data governance uh, capability that provides us the unique availability to achieve economics without maintaining multiple copies of data, those are unique characteristics of that storage layer. And we're really keeping that much more focused on next generation while allowing our clients to tap into those existing storage environments. And how about open source? Where does that fit? Well, from an open source perspective, we, we really think that it's uh, very, very important that we uh, first of all, we've integrated all of our storage with OpenStack. So in the past year, we've integrated all of our storage products, including Elastic Storage, XIV, StoreWise, into the Open Store, OpenStack, uh, Cinder, um, uh, and Swift now with the object work. Um, we've also um, are integrating uh, Elastic Storage with Hadoop, creating a Hadoop connector so that we can also integrate more effectively with that community. And we've continued to drive a lot of innovation into OpenStack. We contributed over 200,000 lines of code to IceHouse um, to support the infrastructure needs of, that we have across IBM. So this is a collective effort um, between our server unit, our software group, our services unit, because we're using OpenStack holistically across the different units. And that brings up a lot of the questions around doing stuff out in the open, innovating in public, obviously open source. We also heard from the practitioners here. It's about trust, right? They need yeah. IBM to yeah. be a trusted partner yeah. at the channel level, also mm -hmm. um, at the practitioner level at the, at the, in the customer yeah. base. So I got to ask you uh, about virtualization. We heard some yeah. folks talking about VMware earlier and that they love IBM's tool chests because they can come in and, and work yeah. within the, the different mm -hmm. countries to build large scale infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind, um, there's some stuff on the web here saying IBM's number one 
in flash optimized solutions from across the portfolio with around virtualization, caching, and training and management. Is that true? Is that number one? Is that a stat that you guys put up there? In terms of flash? It says yeah. IBM's number one yes. with the $1 billion investment, 12 yes. flash centers yes. of competency, 82 petabytes. Yes. yes. What does that mean? Is it part of the executive, it was part of the executive edge presentation? Well, we, what does we, that mean? we do believe that from a flash uh, placement uh, perspective that we are the leaders in flash technology delivery into client base today. So yes, we absolutely do believe that. Uh, it, I think it's a combination of the innovation that I spoke about, the investment in things like the competency center. So you have to have the ability to not only deliver innovation, but make sure that your field is successful with that. And clearly the partner channel is a critical part of that for us. What is the $1 billion investment? Dave and I always joke, you know, the consumerization well, the one, of the IT. The $1 billion <laughs> investment is really the base acquisition price of uh, Texas memory systems along with the, uh, the ongoing investment that we've, we've made in Flash from an organic perspective. Right, we were joking the other day because someone stole one of our quotes on the cube. One of the, I think it was Business Insider, but you know, I said, 10 billion is the new one billion." <laughs> yeah. you know, joking on the old, you know, about the, you know these dot com companies getting you know, 10 billion well, we users. We have been talking about numbers yeah. a lot this week, right? Petabytes, <laughs> yada bytes. You know, one, yeah. one billion is kind of a yawner. I mean, what's more? Give us, is there a 10 billion dollar number in your future? <laughs> Maybe the, okay, uh, next question. Maybe the, yeah. <laughs> well, so no, uh, kidding aside, though, that's a significant investment. But yeah, put that in context. I mean, you're spending that internally. I and mean, we brought this up at OpenStack yeah. HP, so they put a billion dollars in. You guys have a billion dollars in with the Blue Mix. Is that really a billion dollars? If you, is, do you factor in what's inside IBM, what's outside IBM? Because ecosystem is a big part of. Uh, of what you're seeing in these yeah, communities. Yeah, I think that clearly, you know, one billion is just the IBM investment. And we really, there's a tremendous amount of uh, partner investment in, around these products. And, and as you say, we don't really include that in the total number. So that, that's a, a very good point, I think. So we're seeing a lot of hubbub about things like pure storage and all mm -hmm. flash arrays. Is there mm -hmm. one silver bullet? We certainly don't think so. We've been trying to analyze that. I want mm -hmm. to get your perspective on that because you have a portfolio of a yeah. lot of different use cases. You've got transactional, you know, high op, high ops intensive environments, then you've got big data. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there one tool fits all or not really? What's your view on the all flash uh, approaches? Well, uh, clearly all flash is an important play for us. Uh, we've chosen to combine uh, flash with virtualization because we think that has a lot of benefits. Uh, we also believe that you know, flash infusion of these other product lines is really critical. Um, so we're not going to have one single flash recommendation for every workload. I think the, right now we see different use cases that require different offerings. But as things change and as flash becomes more prevalent, you know, our product offerings will reflect what customers need and desire. Well, and there's a practical uh, situation there too, is a lot of the flash startups in particular, and even you know, the flash products from existing players, don't have a stack. Yeah. You drop yeah. it behind an SVC, yeah. instant yeah. stack. Yeah. So you have yeah. a robust, rich stack, 10 year history yeah. of whatever, yeah, sure. service, storage services yeah. you want, you get it in your flash today. That's and, I, and I think as you said earlier, we I think as the stewards of a large client base, we're always focused on how we allow them to innovate, but how we allow them to progress forward with the investments they've already made with us. Yeah, and that's we how have they... the, We have that obligation, right? We have to do both. So my right. final question for you is, um, what's your agenda for the year? Obviously, you have a lot going on, portfolio refresh, you're talking to customers. Is it to continue the portfolio expansion, grow the customers, or any specific priorities you have you'd like to share with the folks out there? Well, I think I stated the prior priorities earlier, right? The software to fund, uh, storage agenda, the flash agenda, uh, the continued journey with storage virtualization. Uh, there's much ahead on the software defined front that I'm not going to necessarily share here all of the conference, so there's more to come. You can tell um, us who you're going to buy. So, <laughs> yeah, Dave always gets that out. Gross margins. <laughs> <laughs> Just basic stuff. Like but, uh, you know, this is a very large agenda for us. I think yeah. that there's a, a tremendous amount of opportunity to integrate the portfolio more effectively. Uh, that we've started to talk about some of that, but I think there's more to come on that as well. Final question, share with you in your own words to the folks out there, what's, why is this time in history so important for this industry? You see Watson getting more yeah. AI, you got cognitive computing, you're seeing storage, and you're saying, you know, you're know, you going to look at storage and have software integrated into storage, mm -hmm. vice versa. Why is this point in time so important for the folks that aren't on the inside of the ropes in, in, the, in the weeds like us, what's, what's important? Well, I, I think there's an inflection point right now that really benefits those of us who are part of infrastructure, part of the storage infrastructure, because of this, this significance of data, right? The infrastructure, we're the stewards of the, I, I said yesterday, data scientists, right? 
we're really the stewards of the data for many organizations and the choices that we make, uh, IBM as a vendor and the clients that work with us, I think fundamentally will set a foundation for workload for years to come and I think that's an important responsibility. It's the next generation uh, yeah. of workload that we're responsible for. 50 years ago, the mainframe was doing information processing. Yes. Sounds like yeah. we're back oh, at data, data processing. processing. Yeah. <laughs> MIS department, Dave, yeah. and DP, yeah. data processing. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're super busy. Yeah. We really appreciate you supporting theCUBE and coming on and sharing Great your insights. You Thank uh, you. This is theCUBE Insight, getting all the action, talking to all the thought leaders and the executives here at IBM Edge Live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE with John Furrier and Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.